Hello again. Where did we leave off? Oh yeah, I was enjoying a restful night at my campsite with free hookups in no man's land. We are for sure in the middle of nowhere. For sure. <laughs> ready? The next day, I got back on the road. I have a lot of ground to cover to make it to North Carolina and needed to keep it moving. At this point, Texas had swallowed me whole. I'm still in what the locals call the Midwest of Texas. Northwest Texas, to be exact. It's rough, tough, and not somewhere you want to be for long. As I told you last time, I know firsthand how dangerous this section of drive can be, so I decided for my next stop, I'd find a Harvest Host rather than Boondock. For those of you who don't know, Harvest Host is an online membership where local businesses offer overnight parking for patroning their store. Sounds harmless, right? Well, little did I know what I was driving into. So we've arrived, not typically where I like to park. We're just behind this business here. Uh, they have a little grassy spot. We're kind of in the middle of this downtown, small town-ish. It's kind of big. Um, but we're at a Harvest Host, and it's right across the street from a laundromat. It was right down the street from a Planet Fitness and groceries. So I thought this is the spot to just park for the night unwind, get some laundry done, support a small business, and then tomorrow we're going to have a trek. We, I want to get all the way to East Texas, uh, past Dallas, So, and hopefully we can land at a beautiful winery there, also a Harvest Toast. Uh, Texas, it gets a lot harder to boondock and really beautiful landscapes, um, so I decided to go the Harvest Toast route and support small business, and it's it's just nice, so it'll be a nice little change of pace. So Rio and I are going to go walk around town a little bit and see if we can find this laundromat. So I literally just took Rio outside to go walk around the block to check out the laundromat and I'm already getting cat called. It's so frustrating, especially now. The way I'm traveling, it's just like... Ugh. Ugh. Makes me feel uneasy. I just hate cities, urban areas. And I now. Oh, Rio. Rio, come on. Got past a little. Oh. Nope. Let's go. to walk around the block the other way to prevent the guy who was catcalling me from continuing to follow me and I didn't want him to know where the bus was and that I was living in it because I'm just behind this business you know like it's nice to be on private property but I mean at the end of the day like this isn't like yeah it's still just me out here um and then the pack of like the small little dogs that wanted to chase after Rio so had to go back around the block. Luckily, the guy wasn't there anymore. <sighs> I'm excited to get out of here tomorrow morning. Yeah. Let me pause right there. What is not shown is my small mental breakdown. I was so angry that some man had the audacity to follow me and infringe upon my boundaries. I was angry that as a solo woman, I don't have the same right to safety as when I traveled with a man. I cried out of pure frustration. I looked around the area to find other camping. The only other options had sketchy reviews by fellow nomads. All I wanted to do was get the hell out of there, but I knew the best thing was to draw as little attention to me as possible and just lay low. So I sent my coordinates to a close friend so they knew where I was, locked myself in, and tried to block out the noise coming from the bar I was parked behind. I was stressed, angry, 
but more prepared to protect myself than ever. Intuition is by far the best weapon you can have when being a solo female nomad. It sucks to not feel super safe and secure um, where you're parked, but that's the reality of bus life. And God forbid anything happens, uh, I'm confident in my ability to react to things. But I think really I just need to hunker down, cut my losses, and then get out of here first thing in the morning and hopefully some, find somewhere much more beautiful and relaxing. You know, it's always good to listen to your intuition and it just sucks when it's been like the alarm has been wrong of like, mm, maybe this isn't such a great spot. Um, but I looked around, there's really nothing else. The crime is pretty high in this area. So I'm just going to deal with it. Um, we're going to make the most of it again. I made chicken nuggets. So life is good. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning team. We made it through the night just fine. Uh, Rio was great. She did her job. Um, there was a few times in the middle of the night where she started growling and just making me aware of stuff going on outside. Um, she was awesome, but without incident, we were totally fine. I'm up early, uh, just trying to get a head start in the day. We're going to stop at a tire shop on our way to a winery in Tyler, Texas. Um, just because my front tire is really bad and I don't want to wait for something bad to happen. I'm just going to get out ahead of it, replace it. Um, and then hopefully the next Harvest Host will be much more peaceful, relaxed. Um, Rio can have a good time just romping around in the winery. Uh, so yeah, let's go. Back home on the road. This is where I feel safest. The world becomes mine and my mind begins to flow. It's almost a form of meditation, therapy even for me. I stopped to get my new tire, which made me feel more confident about the journey ahead. I even had a dream it popped, so I wasn't taking any chances. With every mile that morning, I felt more at ease. It's crazy the contrast I can experience in one day living in the bus. Waking up in a dark, sketchy place to driving through the peaceful countryside. It feels good knowing I'm closer to where I need to be. We made it to this adorable little winery. Rio has this whole yard to run around in by herself. I think I'm the only one here. So I'm gonna go get a glass of wine, eat something, and just... It just got dark out, but look how cute this winery is. Look, all the vines are lit up, how cute. Looks like a little galaxy out there, right out the front door. morning guys I woke up at this winery still all to myself <sighs> it's a little bit of a tough morning but I'm sure as a lot of you know who any of you who are going through a change or a loss or just a new season in life. Um, I'm there with you. <laughs> so. The rain seemed to give me permission to feel blue. Today, my spirit needed to grieve. It's so easy to identify with being strong, empowered, but not to identify with being heartbroken or feeling 
broken or sad. Denying the wounds denies a very important piece of the journey. And to deny it will only create more suffering down the line. As Trevor Hall beautifully said, you can't rush your healing. Darkness has its teachings. So today I allow myself to grieve and I honor the pain in my journey. For I'm stronger and wiser for having gone through it. So be it. Here we are. You go crazy? Hey! <laughs> Come here, Ria! <laughs> Look at you, girl! <laughs> this is the closest thing you've had to a bath in a long time. <laughs> Rio, look at this. So, we made it to Louisiana. I've learned that if I don't give myself the time to be, oftentimes I'll have wounds that go unresolved. And I don't want those wounds to become traumas in my future or lessons unlearned. It can be uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> even now, like, I'm creating space and emotions are coming up and I don't even really know why. But it's so important to let it out, let it flow. This is the work. And it feels so good afterwards if you can sit in this space long enough to where you, your spirit can truly breathe and you can evolve or you can receive the messages, the lessons from whatever you're going through. <sighs> I love you guys. I hope you take space for yourself. You deserve healing too. We'll chat soon.